Hi, first graders. It is Mrs. Layton in Rattenboro. Welcome to our final lesson, lesson nine of the Animals and Habitats Unit. Today, we are learning about habitat destruction and endangered species. Remember, we learned earlier in the unit about the word adapted. Plants and animals take a long time to adapt to their environment. In this read aloud, we are going to find out what happens to living things when their habitats change. Let's go ahead and preview the vocabulary for today's lesson. The first word is destroy. Please say destroy with me. Destroy. That means to completely ruin something. For example, it would destroy the forest if someone cut down all the trees. Our next vocabulary word is endanger. Please say endanger with me. Endanger. To put in danger or harm's way. To create a dangerous situation. For example, a forest fire would endanger all of the animals that make the forest their home. Our next vocabulary is endangered species. Please say endangered species with me endangered species thank you a species present in such small numbers that in the future it may no longer exist for example the bald eagle used to be an endangered species because there were very few alive and people were destroying their habitat our next vocabulary word is extinction please say extinction with me extinction that is the end of a species because the death of all of its members for example dinosaurs once lived on earth but faced extinction because of the changes to their habitat our purpose for listening today what is the learning goal scholars it is to find out how habitat changes have affected mrs layton's favorite animal the bald eagle. Rattenboro here, delivering the final installment of our exciting habitats adventure. We have traveled all around the world looking at some of the different habitats where plants and animals live. A lot of those habitats, such as the Arctic and the Sonoran Desert, have climates to which you and I would have a tough time adapting. Remember, scholars, that the word climate means the kind of weather a place normally has. As we've seen, however, there are different living things in each habitat we have visited. Because some living things are so well adapted to the specific conditions of their specific habitats, any large change in their surroundings could make it hard for them to survive. Just think what would happen if it got even a little colder in the desert. Some of those animals who are so good at keeping cool wouldn't know how to stay warm. Or what if it stopped raining in the rainforest? What would happen to all of those plants that need lots of water? Or what if something happened to disrupt the food chain of a certain animal? If that animal relied on a certain type of plant or animal to eat and that food source was taken out of the habitat, that animal would no longer have the food it needs to survive. Sometimes habitats change because of the temperature or weather changes, but unfortunately, people often affect habitats as well. Whether they realize it or not, people can make it very difficult for plants and animals to survive. From cutting down trees or starting forest fires to dumping dangerous waste and chemicals into our rivers, people's actions can endanger lots of species of plants and animals. To endanger plants and animals means to put them in danger's way. So people's actions can harm or even kill lots of plants and animals. Sometimes people's actions destroy entire habitats. Destroy means to ruin or break something. For example, someone walking in a forest might light a match and drop it and then the whole forest might burn. Even if they were not harmed by the fire itself, many animals that used to live in trees would no longer have a place to live. When they lose their homes, animals find it much harder to continue to live in a particular habitat. If they can't find new places to live, the animals will not survive. After a while, there will be fewer 
and fewer of these kinds of animals alive in the wild. When that happens, we say they have become an endangered species. We say these species are endangered for a very good reason. They are in danger of extinction. An animal or plant that is extinct has died out and does not exist anywhere in the world anymore. I'm on a mission to tell you about one animal that can teach us a lot about endangered species and how to save them. I have come here to Washington State in the northwestern part of the United States to show you an amazing bird called a bald eagle. Look up at that tree there and you will see one of these eagles perched on the very top branch. You may recognize the bald eagle because it is one of the national symbols of our country. Drawings of the eagle appear as a symbol on American money and in many other places. Believe it or not, the bald eagle was almost extinct in the United States several years ago. If that had happened, there would be no bald eagles living today. Scholars, it is comprehension question time. You have two ways to complete this. After hearing the question, pause the video and you can answer orally or tell a person in your family or you can write down the answer. When you have that done, go ahead and restart the video and compare your answer to mine. Number one, what is an endangered species? Endangered species are groups of animals that could die out because there are so few still living. Number two, what is extinction? Extinction happens when an animal or plant dies out completely. Bald eagles are scavengers, but they also eat rats and other small animals, so I better stay out of the way. I think that the bald eagle looks very grand, don't you? It is covered with dark brown feathers and its head and tail are both white. Bald eagles are some of the largest birds living in this country. They can grow up to three feet tall, which is almost as tall as a first grader. Wow, this one has just taken off into the air and you can see that it has huge wings. In fact, their wings can spread about eight feet in length. While this eagle is flying around, let me tell you more about these special birds. There used to be thousands of bald eagles in the United States. But farmers started to hunt them because they thought the eagles were killing their farm animals. Then later, people started to cut down the trees in which eagles built their nests to make way for roads, houses, and shopping malls. With fewer places for them to make their homes, eagles found it harder and harder to survive, and they started to die out. Soon, there weren't very many bald eagles left in the whole United States. People started to notice that there were fewer and fewer bald eagles, and they decided to find out why. Scientists began to study the eagles, and they discovered two things. The first was that a lot of eagles didn't have enough room to build their nests. Eagles do not like to live in the same area as other eagles, so they build their nests far away from each other. They like places that are very peaceful, and they need huge, strong trees that can hold nests big enough for the adults and their babies to live. The scientists discovered that the eagles didn't have enough room in the areas where they had been living because people were chopping down trees in order to build more roads and buildings. People were destroying the bald eagle's habitat. The other thing that scientists found out was that something bad was getting into the bald eagle's food supply. Farmers sometimes use chemicals to keep bugs from eating their crops. One chemical, though, made the eggs that the eagles laid much thinner and easier to break. Because of this, 
many eagle eggs were breaking before they could hatch. No one knew before then that the chemical was hurting the eagles, but it was. Luckily, the scientists found out which chemical was harming the eagle's eggs. Using the scientists' information, the United States government made laws to protect the bald eagle and its habitat so that the eagle's food could no longer be contaminated with harmful chemicals. Thanks to these laws, more eagles were born and the number of eagles started to rise again. Now, bald eagles have made an amazing comeback, but people must always be careful to protect their habitat. It is our final comprehension question time for the lesson. Number three, why do changes in an animal's habitat make it hard to survive? Animals are already so well adapted to the habitat they live in. They can't adapt or make changes to the new conditions of their habitat. Number four, what can cause a habitat to change? Habitats can be affected by changes in both the temperature and the weather and people's actions. This bald eagle has returned to its nest up in that tree. Maybe it has some chicks up there that it needs to feed, or maybe it's just trying to keep warm. It is pretty chilly. And speaking of returning to the nest, I'm afraid it's time for me to go home now. I've really enjoyed our trip around the world's habitats and I hope you have too, scholars. Mrs. Rattenborough and my kids miss me, and to tell you the truth, it's been a dangerous expedition for me. I'll be glad to get out of the danger and into the safety of my lovely home under the steps. Home sweet home, or maybe I should say, habitat sweet habitat. Goodbye.